Uh, today is October 5th, 1998, and I'm talking with uh, Georgiana McCarthy of the Reuter family. I'm of the Farrell family. My name's Paul Farrell, and we're in uh, Mrs. McCarthy's home here in Dixon. And we're going to talk about Dixon, but first we should uh, talk about your family history. Um, Anything you'd like to tell us? Maybe it's as far back as you you know. Do you know much about your grandparents, even great-grandparents? Oh, not my great-grandparents, but I know that my grandparents were born in Germany mm -hmm. and came over here. And uh, why they settled in Dixon, I'm not sure. Did they come over for the, the gold rush? No, I don't think so. Uh -huh. I don't, I'm not aware of it if they did. And uh, my father was born right here in Dixon. I think is interesting, but he went to Cal went to Canada to earn his to make his fortune. He thought, you know, I, before I was born, he went up there, and they came back to California for all the children. There were four of us in the family. They came back for all of them to be born here, except for me, and I was born in Canada, so I'm a Canadian as well as a United States citizen. Mm. Then after ten years, they came back here. And by that time, I was in second grade, so I started Dixon schools here in second grade. But my mother was uh, born in Calusa County. She was the Watson family. The Watson family. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And uh, they came down here, I guess, when she was in high school, I think. And my father and she met in high school and were married shortly after that. After they graduated. I don't know much about her parents, except uh, I think they were born here. Her parents, but my grandparents were born here in the States. I'm pretty sure that they were of English descent. Mm -hmm. And uh, his name was E.R. Watson. Edward. <laughs> I don't know if it does, but I know what the R stands for right now. Well, now, the Royer side of the family. Your, your father was Hans Royer. Yes, he was the oldest one in the family. Okay. Uh, there were five brothers? Is that the one? There were five brothers. There were six, yes. Yeah, six boys and two girls in the family. Oh, six. Eight children. Uh -huh. And he was the oldest. He didn't speak any English when he started to school. Hmm. Just spoke German. In fact, all of them just spoke German, and then they learned to speak English as they went to school. And... Uh, And then at the end of his life, he couldn't uh, speak German. He was <laughs> so involved in English and, and forgotten his German. He could read it, but he couldn't speak it. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see. Uh, we, were, we were talking about your father. Yeah, and my mother and her family. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I don't remember where her parents were born, except uh, that I'm sure they were born here in the United States. They were of English descent. Um, your mother's family, were they uh, involved in agriculture? Yes, uh, uh, yeah, briefly. And uh, my father was a, my grandfather, my mother's father was president of the bank, Forks Northern Bank hmm. of Dixon. Wasn't it, uh, was that called Dixon Bank originally? Yes. Mm -hmm. But my, oh, we were saying that my father had six, five brothers and two sisters. They were a large family. Mm -hmm. My mother had um, four, four, three brothers and one sister. There were just five in that family. Now, I understand the, the Royer brothers, several people have told me that they were pretty good athletes, uh, oh, baseball yeah. and my father played baseball, too, in Canada. I remember we went to baseball games every Sunday. I was so sick of them. <laughs> but uh, he was a pitcher on the local team. And my Uncle Ray, who lived around the corner from me here, he was, uh, um, 
little dark. It's late thing, I guess. Yeah, California. Anyhow, he was with the he was playing professionally for a while. He was a outfielder, I think. And uh, they all played. They all liked baseball. Mm -hmm. How about yourself? Yes, I liked it. Mm -hmm. I, I still like to watch baseball, even though I went baseball games. I didn't think I'd ever want to see another baseball game. Mm -hmm. So we went every Sunday to watch baseball, watch my father play. Well, here in, uh, well, you grew up, uh, well, in Canada, but then you quickly moved to mm -hmm. Dixon. I was about eight years old. When about eight there. years old. Mm -hmm. And you became a teacher. Yes, um, and then I, I became a teacher, and I was not a citizen of the United States because my father had given up his citizenship when he went to Canada. He thought it was to his advantage to be a Canadian. So he gave up his United States citizenship and he had to become naturalized just like any foreigner would when he came back here. And I being born up there had to become naturalized unless my father did before I was 21. And I was almost 21, I was gonna graduate from college and we, Dad still hadn't taken out his papers here. He's still a Canadian citizen. Why? I don't know. And I told him, I said, Dad, let's get going on this because I'll have to do it if you don't. And I hate that Constitution. <laughs> I don't know why I have to study that again. <laughs> so he finally took out his papers just before I was 21. And I've had to prove that over and over again, that I was a citizen of the United States. Hmm. When I when I got married, I had to prove it. And we, we, went to, we went overseas. My husband and I traveled overseas before, before World, no, after World War I, after World War II. And I had to prove it to get my passport. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll have to prove it when they take me to the cemetery. <laughs> well, what about uh, well, your earliest memories of Dixon when you came here when you were eight years old? What was, what was Dixon like? Well, Dixon was very, very small, hmm. like maybe 1,500 people. I'm not sure on that, but uh, probably. And nobody ever locked their houses like they do now. Hmm. That, that just amazes me when I think about it, that we were very trusting. We, well, everybody knew everybody else. Hmm. Not like now. You can, then we could walk down the street and say hello to everybody and call them by name. Very seldom that I can see somebody downtown now that I know. Yeah, it's up to thirteen thousand. Yeah, except fourteen thousand. Is it fourteen? Mm -hmm. yeah. What what do you suppose it was when you were a little girl? What is it? Well, what do you suppose the population was back when you were a little girl? Well, when I was when we came here and I was eight years old, I imagine it was about twelve hundred or fifteen hundred. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, you lived in town. Yes. Uh huh. But we didn't have a lot of paved streets. Those were gravel streets, but not a lot of paved streets at that time hmm. that I remember of, anyhow. Well, of course, everybody had uh, electricity at oh, that yes. time and telephone. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess everybody was, well, a lot of people were driving Model Ts. And oh, yes. My father really had a Model T. A Model T? Yeah, it was stolen <laughs> one time. And found, found I didn't think that happened in Dixon. The car <laughs> was stolen. Yes, they found it up in Newcastle, north of Sacramento. Oh, uh huh. I think Newcastle's north of Sacramento, isn't it? I think so. Mm -hmm. Well, then it wasn't a, a Dixon person who stole the car. Yeah. Of course, an out of towner. They always yeah. stole the crime. <laughs> and the roads, well, you say in town were gravel, and I suppose out in the farmlands they were. Dirt, dirt roads. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a, a town, I guess, built on agriculture. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Yeah. Did you, did you get out and, well, I guess you got out in the country and saw farms. And I guess some people we went to school with uh, were farm families. Some people went to. What well, that you went to school with, they were, they were farm families. Oh, I yes, guess. yes. I guess the majority were. Yeah, I think uh, so. Uh -huh. So you were, you were different growing up in the city. Then. 
You didn't have to come into town for mail. You're already here. Yeah. <laughs> Only we didn't have it delivered to us. We had to go to the post office. Yeah, well, you did? In yeah. Town? Mm -hmm. oh. hmm. Well, as, as a little kid, uh, you went to, to grammar school here in town? Yes. Uh, what was grammar school like? Well, grammar school was right over here, just a block away from where, where we are now. And uh, it's not, it's, no, it's not the same building now. It's the high school is the same building that I went to. Mm -hmm. And uh, grammar school was oh, eight grades, kindergarten. No, no kindergarten at that time. Just eight grades. And uh, small classes like 23, 24. To me, that's small because I've taught school and taught 30 some odd kids. Mm. And, uh, it was good though, the education was a good education, I thought. Right off the bat, I know. What would, what would kids do for recreation at that age? What would they do for fun? Well, play baseball after school or something like that. That's about it. Mm -hmm. But uh, getting on to something else, I remember having only one dress to wear to school. That was all I had. It was, it was during the Depression then, it was near the Depression. Mm -hmm. And so I had just this one dress that I could wear to school. And I think about that now and the kids, the way they dress and, <laughs> and the number of clothes they have. What number of kids, um, number of clothes my kids have was amazing compared to me. Well, we should talk about the Depression so, so kids would know about it. What, what was it like? What effect did the Depression have on, on Dixon? and your family and yourself? Well, we didn't have too much to eat, I remember. And we had no, not very many clothes. Like I said, I had just one dress that I could wear to school. Mm -hmm. We didn't have TV, of course, to listen to the radio. Mm -hmm. um, I remember in high school that it, uh, it was difficult to for children to get their, they could get their education, but to get enough money together to go on to college was not easy at that time. Mm -hmm. And I happened to have uh, older friends of mine who had a daughter my age at one time, and she died when she was about ten years old. So when it came time to me to, for me to go to college, they helped me with my college education financially. Where did you go to college? I went to University of Pacific oh, and studied fun. music. And uh, mm. I stayed there for my freshman and sophomore year. And then my, at that time, my father and mother had three of us in college. That was very expensive, of course. And uh, so at, when I was a junior, I transferred to San Jose State and graduated from there. Mm with the teacher's credential and music, and they had a good music department too. Not quite as good as the University of Pacific, but it wasn't as good, good music training. Hmm. Well, well, let's, let's go back to Dixon and, and high school. Now, you went to the, I should say, the new high school. Is that right? Didn't they, they tear down the old one? And well, maybe I... Or did you go I, to the old one? I went to the old one. Well, you went to the old still, one. It's still there, basically. At this building right across the street here. We're right across from the high school now. I thought that they, they tore down the old high school building because it wasn't earthquake safe. Well, they might have one time, but not. I was there in 31. You were there in 31? Graduated in 35. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So, what was high school like? Did you enjoy well, that? It was good. We had a band. Mm -hmm. I played clarinet in the band. Um, we had, we went on field trips, went to San Francisco on field trips, and uh, I thought we were getting a good education, I think we did. I didn't have any trouble in college, when I went to college, I was still valedictorian in high school. Mm. So a small high school, yeah. maybe 26 in the graduating class. Now they're up in the hundreds. Yeah. 
That's nice. And uh, sports are pretty important there at Dixon High School, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, baseball in particular. Yes. And I played tennis and played on the Rose Fellows tennis team. Hmm. Well, now, um, you, after you got your college education, you became a teacher and mm -hmm. you taught and I right taught, here. I taught school in Albany, California, first of all, which is down there by Berkeley and now. Berkeley and well, any house down by Berkeley and Oakland, and uh, they wanted me to come here and teach. The principal was my principal in high school and grammar school was still here, and he wanted me to come here and teach, but I didn't want to. I I wasn't married at that time, and I wanted to be away from home a bit more. Mm -hmm. So uh, I taught school in Albany for four years, or going on five, I had my, I had my, what's what they call it, tenure. And uh, I married while I was teaching down there. I married a fellow that I'd gone with for four years. And uh, I was teaching music and uh, English. Put on plays, musical plays, and so forth. Then uh, my husband, we were married, and he, when World War II started, he enlisted right away. He thought it was his duty, and uh, he was sent away, of course, to Wyoming. I think he went first. So he wanted me to come home and live with my folks. He didn't want me living down there by myself. So I finally came home and moved in with my, moved in with my family. Let me stop. Excuse me. That's why you that. Okay, we had a, a little phone call there. Now you were saying that your your husband went in the service during the war, and, and you came back to Dixon to live with your parents. Mm -hmm. And so then, uh, of course, I wanted to work, and I didn't want to teach school particularly <laughs> in Dixon. And well, why not? You're a teacher. Well, I could make more money as a secretary. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And so I went to work at Travis Air Force Base as a secretary to the base adjutant. Mm -hmm. And uh, I made more money down there as a secretary than I did as a teacher. And I was there until my husband came back from the service. He was gone for five, five years, I guess. The first, the first, our second wedding anniversary, he was in the middle of the Pacific, Pacific Ocean. And the third anniversary, he was over in India, in China and Burma. And the fourth, third and fourth, he was there. And the fifth, we, he was back home again. Hmm. So I quit teaching, I mean, quit working down there then. And we started our family. Mm -hmm. Went to Washington, D.C. He was stationed at the, at the Pentagon. And we stayed there until uh, he got retired. I mean, he was retired from the service and uh, came back here. And I was, my, family, my son was born here in Sacramento. Our first child was a boy. And uh, see, we stayed here. Of course, we didn't live with my parents. We lived over in a ranch in, in, uh, in uh, Elk Grove. It was hard to find any place to live as well. It's hard to find any kind of an automobile because I had sold my automobile while mm -hmm. when he went into the service. Um, so we thought it was we thought uh, we weren't going to be able to get gasoline and all that. But of course, that was silly because we could. And then my husband became a manager of the fair down here, the Dixon Fair, the Dixon May Fair. Mm -hmm. He was manager there for about three or four years. And uh, well, I guess that's about it. I can't think of anything else. 
Well, the Mayfair, that's, I wanted to ask about that. You said he, he was a manager of the Mayfair. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's a pretty important event. Oh, yes, it is. Dixon. The Mayfair Parade and the Mayfair. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Queens and all that. They used to have the Queen every year. Mm -hmm. And my daughter was a Queen at one time. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's a, our daughter, I should say. And the fair. Uh, now, uh, how did it work? I've never been to a Mayfair yet. Oh, you haven't? I'm going to, though, <laughs> next year. Now they, they have a parade, and then they they have a fair that goes on at the fairgrounds. Yes, that, that's a is that a two day event or a one day event? Well, it's four days now. Four days. Mm -hmm. oh. At that time, when my husband was manager, it was just two days. Uh huh. Everybody talks about the the horse races. Well, not anymore. They don't have horse races. Yeah, I heard they they ended yeah. that, but mm -hmm. that was a big event in the past. Yes, it was. Well, what else goes on at the, hell, the, the fair? Well, they have a lot of showing of the, of the wares, of the, like, uh, food and knitting and crocheting and all that handiwork that women have done, mm -hmm. and uh, show cat sheep and cattle. And, uh, and then they have uh, people, vendors, that come in and sell their wares, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I talked to a woman, you might know her, um, Sadie Peterson. Oh, yeah. She, mm -hmm. she was a, a judge at the fair and was involved in that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I guess it's changed quite a bit. Oh, you? yes, it has. Well, what was it like, uh, the earliest memory of the Mayfair? Well, How has it changed? Of course, it's grown. Yes, it's grown, but then... Um, to me, it's changed in the way in the way, way that uh, I'm afraid to. I, I'm I'm almost afraid to go down there because of people, strangers in the town, mm. and uh, and I don't go very often because I saw so much of it <laughs> when my husband was manager. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's changed a great deal. There's another fair that. Uh I guess been has been discontinued here in Dixon, but goes on in other places. Uh, the Portuguese have their uh, Holy Ghost parade. Yeah, Holy Ghost festival. Yeah. Did you ever go to that? No, I never went to that. Never went to that one. <laughs> You're not Portuguese. No. <laughs> mm. I talked with with Vernon Dutra. His father mm -hmm. was was one of the leaders of that. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting, interesting group of people. Interesting parade. And speaking of uh, groups of people, the way I understand Dixon, it's it's Germans and and Portuguese are the two big groups of people, I guess. In Dixon. In Dixon. Or were. Were in the old yeah. days. Yeah. yeah, very different now. Uh -huh. Yes, I guess it was Germans and Portuguese. There were a lot of Germans. Uh huh. And there's no sort of rivalry or conflict between the groups, was there? Mm -hmm. No, not that I'm aware of. That's what Otto told me. That's mm -hmm. what he liked about Dixon is different groups and even different, uh, oh, I don't know, economic groups would get along. And yeah, that's nice. I guess that's a small town for you. Mm -hmm. um, now, now, wasn't there a Royer who was a mayor of Dixon? That was my father. Your father was the mayor. <laughs> he was mayor for eight years. Uh huh. So, uh, do you know much about about what he did and what what city government was like back then? No, not really. I guess you were pretty small. Yes, we were a small town. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, I don't remember very much about the politics. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I wanted to ask about doctors. Uh, who were the Somebody, uh, I, I've always keep hearing about Dr. Hall. No, Dr. Hall. Yeah. And my, my brother was named for Dr. Hall, Lester. Lester? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that was his first name. Yeah, he was uh, named for Dr. Hall. Yes, Dr. Hall never was my doctor, but I think by the time I needed it, or I was 
choosing eye doctors, he was no longer practicing. I, I think maybe not even alive. I don't remember much about him. Yeah, I think he, he died in 1939 or the late 30s somewhere. Um, but what about some of the, the businesses here in town? Uh, well, you mentioned the bank, of course, mm -hmm. but uh, whatever. My, my father had a hardware store oh. um, for a while, and then he, he went into insurance business, and that was his real, his main business, I guess. <coughs> but uh, we had a When he had the when he had the hardware store, he had just one plumber working for him, and the plumber had an old Model T, and his name was Joe Joe Schoner. We called him Joe Plumber. <laughs> we we the kids called him Joe Plumber. But uh, yeah. And now a hardware store. You say the hardware store had a plumber. Mm -hmm. Yes, he had plumbing as well as hardware there. My father did. He well, when, when I think of a hardware store, you can go in and you can buy pipes and such yeah. things, but you could go to your father's hardware store and, and get Joe Plumber? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he had the hardware at the, at the front end and the plumbing at the back end. Oh, I see. The store. So it was Joe's business in the back and your mm -hmm. father's business in the front? Well, it was, no, it was my father. He owned the plumbing. Yeah, so Joe worked for your father? Yeah, Joe worked for my father. Oh, that's a pretty handy arrangement. Yeah. Uh, let's see now. Now Otto's uh, wife, Helen. Uh, Helene. Helene. Her last name was uh, Kirby. Kirby. Yes. That, that was a Kirby uh, pharmacy? Drugstore. Drugstore. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. Do you remember the? Yeah, I remember the drugstore. They had a soda fountain there? Did they had what? Did they have a soda fountain? Yes, they had a soda fountain. Mm -hmm. And there was a girl out that had a, a soda fountain, too. He didn't have a drugstore, but he had a soda fountain. Oh, who was that? Gerlach. Gerlach. Mm -hmm. G-E-R-L-A-C-H. That was German. Mm -hmm. What other businesses did old businesses uh, have? Oh, no. Oh, department store where they sold goods and, uh, to buy by the yard and so forth. I can't think of the name of that one. Oh, that's a German name too. Was that a Schulze's? No, Schulze. This is a Schulze house too, by the way. Oh. Schulze was a, was a jeweler. Oh, Schulze was a jeweler. Mm -hmm. I mixed up. But there are Schulzes that were farmers, too, but the mm -hmm. one that built this house was a jeweler. Oh. So there was a Schulze jewelry. Mm -hmm. And then there was, a, there was a department store. I remember Malcolm Tim told me about it that had just everything you could imagine. Mm -hmm. You could even buy and sell grain. He, he would loan money, even. <laughs> I can't remember the name of the place. I can't remember the name either. You can't remember either. <laughs> Now, Dixon had a theater. They don't have yes, one anymore. Yes, they had a theater. Yeah. In fact, I had my first date when I was nine years old. <laughs> That's pretty to young that he did. Went to the theater up at Dixon with this young man, with this boy. He was nine or ten, too. Hmm. That was my first date. So that was, uh, those are some of the fun things to do. I guess go to a soda fountain and go to a movie, mm -hmm. socialize. See, what should I ask you about now? Um, well, uh, you know, you said you grew up in the Depression. Of course you did, but when you were real, real small, there was Prohibition. Probably. But do you remember anything about Prohibition? You ever hear stories about uh, hmm. moonshiners and that thing? No, not really. You were too small to be aware of it, I guess. I guess so. Yeah. Well, let's see. What else should we talk about? 
I want to ask you about hotels. That's on my list of things. Did Dixon have any? Well, they had a hotel. They still do have for that matter. Yeah. It's in the same place practically <laughs> upstairs. I don't know what it looks like. But Oops. Uh, oh, let me put the door. I don't remember much about the hotels for that matter. I guess you'd never stay in one if you lived no. in Dixon. Now, uh, Dixon had a, uh, and they still do have, a volunteer uh, fire department. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just recently moved out of the downtown uh, fire department. It was downtown. And they're now out by, uh, by the Craps. Mm -hmm. um, North First Street. Do you remember any uh, big fires in Dixon? No, I don't remember any big fires or even the earthquake or anything like that you mentioned out here. Uh, earthquake, fires, robberies, floods, strikes. I don't remember any of that. don't remember any of that. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody else has mentioned an earthquake. Uh, there's been some high water, I know. Uh, I've talked to people out and we do some farming. Mm -hmm. And grain fires. Grain fires were fields of grain burning. But in town, I guess Dixon's been pretty lucky that way and not having... I guess fire. years ago there was a big fire here in Dixon. A hotel burned down. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, think in the I don't remember that. Maybe I wasn't even here. You were probably in Canada when that happened. Yeah. Well, um, have I, what have I forgot? What else should we be talking about? What about what? What else should we talk oh, about? Oh, I wondered what, <laughs> what should we talk about. Um, you asked if I had any relatives who were in World War I or in any way before 1940. Oh, did uh, you? Uncle Ray was the one who was a ball player. He was in World War I. Oh. But he didn't go overseas, I don't think. But in World War II, my brother was killed. He was killed in North Africa, right near the beginning of the war. And he was the only boy in my father, in that family. So that just about finished my mother and father to have their only son gone. But uh, Uncle Ray was the only relative that I can remember was in World War I. Mm -hmm. and, uh, interesting personal memories of yesteryear that you would like to share. Yeah, um, I was a school teacher, of course, and I taught in Albany first. Mm -hmm. But I was only 21 when I first started teaching. Well, you, how long did you teach in, in Dixon? 26 years. 26 years in Dixon. And uh, I remember when I was teaching down in Albany that I was, had a seventh grade class. And this one boy got out of line. I don't know what he did right now. I couldn't tell you. But I remember taking him by his ear and throwing him out the door. I told him to go see the principal. And the principal called me the next day. And the boy came to school the next day with his ear all bandaged and told me his grandmother was going to sue me. I said, well, that's fine. And <laughs> so the principal called me in there. And he said, if you have to throw them out, please grab something other than their ear. <laughs> Kids then uh, were not nearly as bad as they are now. Now I started teaching again here in Dixon, and I was out of teaching for uh, about 10 years, I guess. And I started teaching in 53 here in Dixon, and taught for 26 years. And the kids were quite respectful and not like they are now. Mm -hmm. I had six, seventh and eighth grades. I started in seventh grade and ended up teaching 6th, 7th, and 8th grade now when we, when we moved over from East Dixon Elementary to C.A. Jacobs Intermediate. We had to choose a subject to teach to 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. 
and I chose math because it was either right or wrong, faster to correct. <laughs> <laughs> and I was That's a math right. minor and an English minor, but English has a long, long story when it comes to correcting papers for English because you have to do the spelling, punctuation, paragraphing, and everything. I actually taught English for a very short while. You're right, it's a rough job. Yeah. But you had a very rough job teaching 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. Yeah. Now that's, <laughs> that's I think weren't that all that bad. Not as really? bad as they are now, I don't think. That was pretty bad. In the but days. I was called mean old Mrs. McCarthy. Oh, mean old Mrs. McCarthy. And I was very strict with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, they knew it, that they could, many of them would come back and thank me for it mm -hmm. in years past. Well, what about the kid with the, the bandaged ear? That was... <laughs> well, his mother, his grandmother did not sue me. <laughs> but uh, she, she probably told him that she was going to or something, because he told me that's what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. But nothing happened. But I was very careful after that. I didn't... <laughs> he didn't grab by the ears didn't anymore. didn't grab by the ear. By the arm or something. Uh, well, yeah, earlier I mentioned uh, Otto, and Otto is involved in all sorts of things in Dixon, the uh, Historical Society, um, well, and a few other things. It has a long history of being involved in, in organizations. I, I think maybe that's another thing that makes Dixon, at least the old-timers, the earlier people, stick together are some of these organizations. Uh, there's a woman's What's the women's club called? Uh, women's Improvement Club. Women's Improvement Club. Are, are yes. you a member of Women's Improvement Club? Yes, I am a member. Past president. Past president. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. Dixon has a lot of good little groups like uh, that. What, what exactly did the women do, the Women's Improvement Club? What, what, what did they do? What, what did, did they, they do? do? Yeah. Well, they're still, live, they're still existing, the mm -hmm. Women's Improvement Club. And they give scholarships and, and help with uh, with uh, improving the land or, or the city, like the park and so forth. Mm. You know, the Women's Improvement Club Park. Mm. And they help with the library. That park next to the library. That mm -hmm. was That's Women's Improvement Club Park. That's Women's Improvement Club Park. Mm -hmm. That's the name of the park. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it has a sign down there. Oh. Mm -hmm. And, uh, See, a lot of people like to like to play bridge, get together and play bridge. Oh, uh, yes. Are you a bridge player? Yes. In fact, I'm going to be entertaining my bridge group here this Wednesday. Oh. I, have, I belong to two. One I call AM and one PM. It's the AM group, AM group, which I will have Wednesday. They come at 10 in the morning. And we start playing, and then I serve lunch. The hostess serves lunch. And we play again in the afternoon oh. until we've played with each other. The PM group. They come at one o'clock, and uh, and the hostess just serves dessert. And they play, mm -hmm. and there are many of us that belong to two, the same two groups. But mm -hmm. it's fun. I enjoy it. I remember though when I was going through college and teaching and so here and so forth. My parents wanted me to learn to play bridge. They were good players, good bridge players, and I couldn't see anything worse than playing bridge sitting there with Clark. So I never would let them teach me, and I wish now they had, because I had to go to, a, I took a class at Wine Stocks in Sacramento when I, when I retired from teaching, because I wasn't playing bridge until then. Hmm. I've never played bridge. I didn't know it was such a complicated game. Oh, yes, it is. Every, yeah. every hand is different. No, I just play poker. So. <laughs> I, I don't enjoy playing poker. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of a, a, a divide between men and women? Uh, women play poker and, I mean, men play poker and women play bridge? Oh no, my father was played bridge. Father played bridge. Yeah, he played bridge more than he played poker. He, uh -huh. was, he could play poker, but he played bridge more. I think it was because uh, men and women, husbands and wives, play bridge lots in those days. Not so much now, maybe, but I know my mother and father played with their friends. Husbands and wives play together. So,
card playing, do you think card playing is more popular, uh, let's say, in the 1930s than they are in the, in the 1990s? No, I think. Maybe a little bit, but no, there are. We have, uh, in the groups that I'm in, we have young people as well, young women as well as older, like myself. Mm. Well, I was just kind of thinking up some theory that because there was no television, you have to play yeah. cards. Of course, you had radio, though. Yeah, that's right. Radio was pretty important. Yes, I, it was. I guess it would be. Your only you know, outside entertainment coming into your home was yes. radio. Right. You know, uh, Margaret uh, Carpenter Royer. Mm -hmm. She just loved uh, dances. She was always she was spent a lot of time talking about dances, high school dances, and, and oh. such things. That's another thing where people of of Dixon get together. Mm -hmm. Not so much today, though. There's high school dances, but Margaret was telling me that there was a dance for the fire department and a dance for another organization, uh, the, right. the Masons. I think. Yeah, we had a dance club at one time too. A dance club. club? Belong to. Oh. Yeah. What, 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 how does a dance club work? Well, they have a dance a month, once a month, had a dance once a month. Oh. And we had costumes, like if it was a Halloween, we'd have Halloween costumes and so forth like that. So a dance would like, have a theme, I guess you'd say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went to, what was the name of the hall out here? Out in the country, we had dances out there a lot in the hall. Mm -hmm. My memory is gone. Yeah. Yeah, I think Margaret talked about uh, the dances went on pretty late, well past midnight. Oh, yes, till about two in the morning. Till two in the morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's good, good aerobic exercise. Yeah. A good aerobic exercise. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've been in Dixon a long time. Uh, why Why did you always stay here? What, what do you like about Dixon? Why, why is Dixon a nice place to live? Well, I think it's nice to, because it's a small town, it's good to raise a family here. Mm -hmm. I think that's one reason we stayed here, my husband and I. He wasn't doing it from a small town, though he was from San Francisco Bay Area. So it was quite a change for him to come to a small town. But I liked it because uh, we knew most everyone, not nowadays, so mm -hmm. I could walk down the street and speak to everybody that would call them by name, but I can't now, of course. And I liked that part of it. Dixon's a nice town. I don't live here. I'm, I'm learning uh, more and more about it. I, I'm almost starting to feel jealous of people <laughs> being from Dixon. Well, uh, anything else we should talk about? No, I think not. I noticed my boyfriend was out there looking in the window a little while ago. Oh, you're going to go golfing now, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's 9 o'clock. Yes. You better get going. Well, thank you very much for, for taking the time. Thank on behalf you. of the Dixon Library for sitting down and talking to me for a while. Thank you.